My name is Ilana from Isle Rugby Travel, um, and joining us for coffee today is um, Springbok National Coach Shark Minaba, um, as well as Martin B, CEO of Tourist Destination Management, and Monet Dupree, um, CEO of Tourist Travel Services. Um, Shark, thank you very much for joining us today, um, uh, and thank you for sharing your time with us um, for this me. afternoon. Um, I have a couple of questions, some of them you may not be able to answer, um, don't want to give away too much, um, but as much as you can share with us that will be great, um, especially for the fans. Um, awesome, okay. awesome. Okay. Um, so, appointed in January 2020, um, just off the back of an incredible win in Japan 2019, um, uh, preparing for British and Irish Lions, Full rugby championship, etc., etc. Um, instead, COVID hits us. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, we go into full lockdown. That must have been very, very challenging for you. Um, I know it was challenging for us as a business. Um, uh, what was that like? Um, can you describe what that meant for you, um, for you as a coach, firstly? Um, and then also what it means and, and what that process was for you as a team? Yes, I, yeah. I think the 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 the, the start of it. Um, I was I was on a flight back from. We actually won um, team of the year to beat the Cedars uh, and uh, and Liverpool. Uh, and might I say a glorious in in uh, in um, uh, Germany. So we were on a flight back, and and um, myself, my wife, and things just got it heated up on Italy and and the whole COVID thing and. But, but I mean, I thought it's going to blow over um, in five weeks. And uh, then we came in South Africa and uh, we touched down in South Africa. And then two weeks later, lockdown happened. I think that probably the toughest thing for us was uh, we didn't know when, the, when it's going to end. You know, and I think probably similar in your business. Uh, so you've got the scenario, OK, we're going to play in July against uh, against Scotland and we planned and where we're going to have our camps and uh, what the content of the training camps would be like and we did team selection and we told the players listen we know you're not locked down you must stay fit and we intervened and, and had online sessions and stuff like that just for the goalpost to move another month and then another month then it got cancelled and then uh, okay, we're going to go rugby championship, and the, I think that was the tough yeah. part, you know, the, the scenario planning. So you've got 10 scenarios happening. Uh, uh, rugby championship is going to, uh, we're going to play in Dubai. Now we're going to play in Australia. Now it's going to come to South Africa. Now we're going to play in the Northern Hemisphere. And, and, and you have to do all the logistics like you guys. You have to do all the team selections, all the monitoring of players, all the interventions with the players. And, and just not knowing when it's going when, when it's going to end. So I thought that was tough. And and it's not not one scenario. You you can maybe say, listen, that one's probably not going to happen because maybe that one's going to happen, and then you're not you then know, you're, not you're not prepared. Yeah. So that was the tough part of it. And I think for the players, the tough part is they were continuously. We drove them. Do your fitness. Uh, do their weight. Uh, uh, measure their weights. Make sure that their diets and look after their diets. And at one stage, they were asking for what? For when? Why are we doing all this fitness? For when? And I think that was a tough part to keep them motivated and, and for us to do all this scenario planning. Wow. But they got through it. Yeah. They, 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 we, we got through it because I think that's a, the, probably the beauty of South Africa, you know, uh, and South Africans is that True. it's do or die. You know, you, 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 you have to adapt. Uh, South Africa is a country where. Uh, it's adapt or die. So, so, and and I think that's the that that's the type of uh, uh, players we like to to select and within our squad. The yeah. mentality yeah. Uh, we we like to select the first thing uh, before we look at, at team selection is is yeah. almost this warrior mindset. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and it's not necessarily the best player, but it's the it's the right player. It's the warrior player that will take ownership. That has good discipline both on and off the field. Uh, that's the first thing that we look at, and and I think that's. Uh, but is it good for players to take such a long break because they must be the healthiest they've been or the most uninjured they've been, uninjured they've been in a long time. Yeah, I know. You know what? And that's why we actually we had to make a tough decision in 2020. We didn't play any international rugby in 2020, and we the decision was. Uh, 
the, the science, we, because we didn't know how it's going to affect our players. Our, we didn't have uh, our, a lot of our players, uh, because our lockdown was, was longer than the, than the lockdown of, of New Zealand and Australia and, and in the UK, um, our players didn't have access to high performance environments. So they, they might have a couple of weights in, in some of our players are staying in flats on the seventh floor. So, so they didn't have, they couldn't run, they couldn't get outside. So, so we didn't know how this will uh, uh, affect our players in terms of the conditioning. And um, we actually got a study in 2011. Uh, there was a contractual dispute between the NFL uh, in America uh, and the owners. And they just uh, barred the NFL continuing and they closed everything. So the players in the NFL didn't have access to the high performance environments, the gyms, the, 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 the sports nutritionists, the sports psychologists, the doctor, the conditioning coaches. And then after three months, the dispute was, uh, was uh, alleviated or, 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 or finished and they went back into to NFL. They had this massive injury spike and big injuries, tendons, because in that three months, the, the players weren't load, loaded with weight, so they had a big injury uh, spike. And, and we then, the, the nice thing for us in South Africa, a lot of our players were locked out in South Africa, but they applied their trade abroad. So when the players went back, there were 16 of our big players that were playing abroad. Within a month, 25% of their big injuries, big dramatic uh, injuries that took them out for a year. Uh, so we as a business had to make a decision uh, 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 of player welfare. Is it, is it good for our players? And uh, we, we, we penciled out, listen, we, we need to play at least 400 minutes before we go into international rugby. And, and then we decided, listen, we couldn't get to that marker. So it was a big thing for us because we had to be ready for British and Irish Lions the year after that. So uh, I think the financial guys weren't happy for us not playing because there wasn't any, any revenue coming in. But and the, and now looking better, back at it, it was definitely the right decision looking long term at, uh, at uh, uh, the British and Irish Lions here. So it's a very interesting question yeah. and very yeah. relevant. Yeah. So we're now at the end of the, of, of the lockdown, potentially, hopefully. Um, fingers crossed. Um, looking back, though, what are some of the creative ways that you um, that you you some of the creative things that you put in place um, to keep the players fit, to keep them focused? Um, you spoke about um, having the, the right mindset, um, keeping them mentally you know um, in place. What are some of those things that you, as a coach, had to actually put in place? I think. I don't think there's a lot of positives of uh, COVID, but I think one of the positives of COVID is the remote access you had to players. I mean, if, if you literally could be in the lounge of a player anywhere in the world uh, through Teams, uh, which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. But uh, but uh, but we, with especially with the Springboks, with with su such a large portion of our of our playing group that applies their trade abroad, you know, we got. I think in the group that we're looking at, there's over 30 players that plays on uh, in in four competitions across uh, the world in four different uh, continents. You know, but yeah. we could track them, and, and that wasn't something that we did in the past. Uh, uh, those players went almost on their own demise. They 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 went on their own path. You know, but now we could actually track them and we could talk to them, and we had. Well, we just had uh, continuous sessions with them, not continuous, but check in with them once a month. Uh, we could do, um, uh, we, we, we got a project or uh, uh, going on what we call road mapping, where we actually took a player and we said, listen, this is your road map to when we start again, th this is where you are currently, uh, uh, when we did a performance analysis on their games. Uh, uh, and like I say, if they were playing in the Japan League and the, uh, the, the, um, American League, the French League, doesn't matter. We, we could track them and we could do a performance analysis on those individuals, but then we could also put an intervention plan in place. Okay. And, and, and uh, with cell phones these days, when you uh, give drills to players, you, you ask them, listen, fill them yourself, uh, and then you can do fault correction. Uh, so it's not the ideal way. Face-to-face, -face, I would say, is always better, but I mean, that is uh, creative stuff that we had to think of. Uh, in keeping in contact with the players, you know, and uh, sometimes we would have um, 
uh, psychologist uh, talking to them from a, 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 a we will get us, uh, all the players involved and yeah. we would have some psychologists talking to them and to, especially the lockdown period uh, and maybe uh, what is things that you can do to, to get your mind off things and stuff like that so so those are the things uh, I think that, that that came out of it that that is actually we, we keep on implementing now um, so it doesn't matter for us if a player goes and applies his trade abroad in Japan. Uh, if he plays on Saturday, uh, within four hours I can go into any little bit of detail of that player's performance. I can I can just look at his passes, or just at his tackles, or just at his kicks, or his whole game uh, at a touch of a button. And I don't have to watch his, the whole game. I can just click on his involvements, and and they will come up. Uh, and, and I would look at his 64 invo um, involvements. Yeah, does it, does a team like a, uh, have a culture like a business has a culture? Because the one thing that we've noticed, and all of us had to learn to work remotely. And some of us hated it, and some of it loved us, and some people are still are still at home now. But what certainly what I've noticed is that you lose your company culture uh, in Teams or in Zoom. Yeah. Um, and that's why we're bringing back our people now, currently two days a week, so soon three days a week. Does it does a sports team have a culture? Definitely. And would you have noticed that your culture gets diluted by being in a digital space as opposed to in real life? Yeah, without a doubt. And that's why what we would do now, uh, and uh, we, we call it alignment camp. So, so uh, we, when it was COVID, we did that purely digital and online. But now, um, let's say we in the past, we wouldn't have even gone to those players. We would now, I would, let's say, fly over there. Uh, uh, we, we normally, we would have we would have had a camp there so the cost was getting everybody in you have a camp uh, in the uk and what we will do now is uh, i would go abroad and i would go and visit a, a player at his team so it's uh, so i think from a cost point of view we we only spend on one flight one stay but i get to meet the players there and spend some time with him uh, have a meal with him maybe with his family to touch a little bit of base because i think that's very important but then and uh, I don't have to sit and have a, uh, a, a one day or two day alignment camp with one player because he, he plays at Ulster. Then I go to Munster and there's two players there. Then I have a two day camp with them. Then I go to Toulouse, have a two day camp with them. Mm -hmm. I can still visit them but spend a day there, spend a day there, spend a day there. So I spend in a week, uh, in seven days, I can literally visit 14 clubs. But then on, on one day, I can invite all of them digitally and have one two-day camp with them. So, so I think it's a lot more uh, um, time effective. Uh, if you think, if I had to visit 14 clubs mm -hmm. times two days per camp, that's a whole month yeah. of camps. Where now I can uh, go in, 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 in seven days, I can do 14 teams and, one, uh, and two days of, of, of one alignment camp, getting everybody involved over Zoom. So you get a little bit of the contact, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, uh, spend some time to, with a player, with his family, but then you just do the, 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 the alignment camp, yeah. online, digital. Yeah. So Zoom is bad for business travel? <laughs> yeah, I don't think anything is bad for business travel. I think there's certain things, as Jock says, you can't do a deal over Zoom. You probably can't cock someone out of a zoom. No, no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. It, no. <laughs> You've got to see the emotion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's the important thing, you know, on, on Zoom, because a lot of coaching is emotion. Uh, you, yeah. uh, if you invest in motion, you will get emotion. So if you get a player to defend his trial line and you want him to defend the trial line with his life, mm -hmm. He's got to invest emotionally into that. Yeah. So, and, and you only get emotion if you can if you can give emotion as a coach, as a leader, as a whatever. Uh, you have to give emotion to get it. So, and you can't do that with you. You understand? Yeah, yeah, same in yeah. leadership and business. It's also about emotional attachment to what yes. you're responsible for. And you can't do that in Zoom either. No, no. Yeah. Or teams. No. <laughs> but I think most probably it could be better for you because you're making your travel count. So, value for money travel is a little bit. A little bit better than what it was in the past. Um, and you spend less, less time away from home, I guess, mm. as a result. Question then is, um, you said you, you mentioned family time with the player and his family. Yeah. How important does that play in your, in your bigger scheme of things? The family portion of the, let's call it rugby business. Massive. 
uh, I, I think I think it differs from team to team, but in this in the Springbok side, the family is massive. Uh, and uh, when we went to the uh, 2019 World Cup, we were one of the teams that our wives and partners and kids were allowed within the environment. And and even with the British and Irish Lions series, we actually uh, I think that was one of the successes of us. We got our families also to do quarantine and, and they had to go to, a, to, a, to our quarantine facility to get into our biosecure bubble. And then obviously within that environment, we had pressures, we had barbers, we had uh, a driving range. Uh, it sounds, uh, but, but you know, like a, a 10 meter uh, area where you could hit a golf ball I I into uh, um, just into a, a facility. Just to get some of the frustrations out, so I think that's massive. And 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 um, even even you know when sometimes yes you'll have a hard day of training and yes things didn't go well and you you're a little bit down. And then when you get back into the hotel and all the kids come running to their fathers and their hugs and you know immediately your minds uh, you were sulking a little bit, but immediately you 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 your own your whole mentality change, you know, and uh, so now for us it's big. I think it's there's challenges with that. So obviously ownership needs to get tagged because I think it can become loose. And it, 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 it but I must say uh, we've got a very experienced group within our team, so they manage it quite well.